Uh, hi, thank you. Thank you for being here. So uh, my name is Kostadinos and I am a model. I'm using SPH to model uh, cold water coral growth uh, in the University of Edinburgh. So before I go into my model, I would just would like to give you a very quick introduction what cold water corals are. So they look like in the picture on the left. So they live very deep in the sea. So there's no sunlight down there. And the only available uh, way that they have to feed, the, to feed themselves is to catch spray, uh, so plankton or any other, uh, any other uh, microorganism in order to, to feed and get the, the, uh, to get the nutrients they need. And the, in the picture on the right, we can see that the, the distribution is uh, worldwide. So it's not like tropical corals that they need cold water, they need the hot water. They can be, uh, they can be anywhere uh, around the world. Um, so as I said, uh, these corals uh, depend on the amount of food on the amount of uh, uh, organisms that they catch, the prey they catch in order to survive. Um, so the, the main uh, hypothesis behind our models is that they operate uh, by using the Goldilocks principle. So what we say is that there's an ideal velocity range where uh, growth is going to be optimal. If the velocity of the, of the water around the, the coral reef is slower, that means that prey can evade capture easily. But if it's faster, then the tentacles of these corals are going to be pushed uh, pushed aside by the current. So, uh, so by by and and an interesting fact is that these coral reefs are in environments with very high very high uh, free flow currents, uh, which means that they modify their own environment in order to to manufacture this uh, velocity range and be able to survive. So, uh, uh, my in my model. Uh, first of all, uh, I, uh, the SPH solver uh, is simple, so it solves the momentum and continuity equations. And after that, I have to, I have, I have, I've made two different uh, functions. Uh, there's a growth step uh, where, uh, yeah, I also should say that uh, uh, I should explain the concept of uh, energetic reserves. So energetic reserves is uh, the energy that these corals can store after after uh, satisfying their energetic demands. So it's some energy that they, they can use in the future if they're not in uh, optimal condition. So if they don't have food, they can use this instead. So in my model, it's pretty simple. I say, for example, if uh, they have an energetic reserve equal to three units of energy, that means that they can survive three uh, steps in suboptimal conditions. Uh, and yeah, so, af so after the SPH solver solves the, equa the, the equations of the motion, uh, there's a growth step where it checks, it checks the particles around the, cor the coral. Uh, it, if the conditions are right, then the coral is assumed to be grow, to, it's, it's going to grow, and its energetic reserves are going to, to increase. Now, the way that it grows is by converting a fluid particle that is close to, uh, that is a neighbor, of a, a coral particle, and in, in ideal conditions, it converts this particle from fluid particle to a coral particle. And after that, there's a survival step where it, it checks the exact opposite. It checks uh, if the conditions are suboptimal, uh, then it decreases the energetic reserves. And if at some point these energetic, energetic reserves are below zero, then this leads to coral mortality. And this happens uh, uh, again and again until. Uh, uh, the, the simulation is done. Um, here there was supposed to be a GIF of the simulation, but it's not working. I may be able to show a video at the end. Um, so uh, the first the first thing we did in, in this model was to evaluate uh, this Goldilocks zone, this uh, hypothesis we have. So there are some there's some literature and some uh, some fieldwork that suggests that for an income of uh, 0 0.5 meters per second, growth velocity could be around two and six centimeters per second. So we want to see what would happen if, if, if actually the ideal velocity is lower or if it's higher. So we can see at the top when the ideal velocity is low, uh, it starts to grow, but eventually uh, the coral is going to be dead. So uh, bright red means that uh, it's live and the uh, brown is, uh, is dead tissue. Uh, when it's between two and six, so the ideal velocity from literature, we can see that it grows it, uh, as, as expected. So it has a live coral uh, tissue uh, deposited on dead coral framework. And in faster conditions, it wasn't even able to, to, to change its environment fast enough. So it died quickly. 
Um, so the first thing that uh, so another thing we did was to to model to model growth based on energetic reserves. So uh, the first model we didn't we didn't have a death rule. So uh, the coral would grow infinitely until it covered the whole domain, which is a bit unrealistic. And then we we introduced the concept of energetic reserves. Uh, so we can see when they're low, eventually it will lead to coral mortality. When we initialize with some higher values, uh, it works like uh, like as expected. So we have some uh, particles uh, that are live and deposited on top of uh, a dead coral, a dead coral framework. Um, now, uh, another thing is that uh, everything so far was based on hydrodynamics, but there is, there is, uh, there's a question here that even the hydrodynamics, even if the hydrodynamics are, uh, even if a, a zone in the, in the coral reef has uh, optimal conditions, it doesn't mean that it will have enough nutrients. Because, for example, in my simulations, we have flow from left to right. So nutrients come to the domain from left, which means that uh, uh, particles that, uh, that are closer to the inlet would have uh, more opportunity to, to get this nutrient. So by the time that it goes downstream, there may be not enough. So yeah, so, uh, it, so this next model has also uh, 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 nutrients. Uh, and these play an, an important role on the growth of, coral, of the coral. So we can see that uh, in the picture at the top, top left, uh, it is one like the previous one. We assume that there's infinite nutrients, and then we limit it as we go to the right. Uh, so one thing we can quickly see is that obviously when there's more nutrients, the corals are going to grow faster, and they're going to grow bigger in size. Uh, but if we look closely more in more qualitative, qualitative uh, data, we can see that uh, when there's less, when there's when we limit the nutrients, uh, the the ratio between dead between live and dead coral particles becomes higher, and that's why there's less competition in the domain. So uh, there's less particles that uh, are competing for the same amount of nutrients. And another another thing that we saw is that. Uh, when we increase the, nut the nutrient availability in the domain, uh, coral particles tend to live uh, 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 tend to live less and less. Uh, that happens again because there's less competition. There, there's less competition for there's more. So as we as we give more nutrients, there's uh, the grow the coral grows faster and bigger. So there's more there's more particles and they compete for the finite resources and uh, so that leads to to smaller uh, lifespans. Um, also, we are looking. Uh, another model is about ocean acidification. So uh, the the oceans these days become uh, more acidic, and which means that some of uh, the the framework of these coral reefs can be exposed to acidic waters, and over time it can be it can be dissolved. So in the picture on the on the bottom bottom right, we can see that. Uh, uh, at A, we have a fully developed uh, coral reef that can support a very, a very biodiverse life. And as it is exposed to, uh, to, to more acidic conditions, it can grow less and uh, less and less in size and support less and less organisms. And that's something that we are doing. This is work in progress. So the picture on the left, we started from a, a, a fully grown coral exposed to more and more acidic conditions, and eventually we ended up with something that only the live coral particles uh, have uh, remained in the in the domain. Um, so a, a very quick note about validation. There is some data. So we looked at uh, the ratio between uh, live and uh, dead coral uh, coral particles in the domain, and compared it with some studies from the field. Uh, uh, in pretty much everything was between this ratio between 0 0.1 and 0 0.27. And also, if we look at the pictures, it's something that looks like what we are seeing in picture. Obviously, this is in 2D. And we also have plans to, to do it in 3D in the future as well. And that goes me to the next uh, slide. So uh, we are working with 3D models as well. So at the top picture, uh, we have the same concept I saw earlier with nutrients. So up going to the right, we we'll, we we'll limit the nutrients, and this is in uh, in CD, it's a, it's a, it's an early stage. So we want to, to do the same analysis to to see if what we see in today uh, is actually true in uh, in the three D models as well. 
And, and the la another thing that we're looking into is competition between, col between more than one colonies in the same domain. So in the picture on the left, we have uh, some colonies fer uh, further apart. And as we go to the right, these colonies are closer together. And we can see how hydrodynamics and nutrients around them uh, influence their, uh, their growth. Uh, again, this is something that we did uh, recently. We can see that the, the distance between them affects, but affects how they grow. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's something that we're looking more uh, uh, in the future. Uh, so thank you, thank you very much. For